Hello, my friend. Welcome back to The Terry Hansen Show. As you know, my name is Terry Hansen. It's great to be with you once again. I'm super pumped because in this particular episode, we're going to be talking a little bit about why you, as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, may be noticing uh, how your salespeople, your customer service teams, or why they may be struggling now more than ever to close new sales with your ideal clients. Uh, as you know, we are in about week eight at this point in time of the brand new COVID-19 recessionary. So many businesses have closed. Over 30 million people have filed for unemployment. We've gone, all of us have gone through a period of, of uh, several weeks, a month, month and a half worth of quarantine and shelter in place uh, type mandatory government regulation. And at this point in time, many businesses are in week one and uh, week two. Of, of reopening their businesses. But what's interesting is uh, right now with, uh, with the impact, negative impact that the coronavirus has had on our global economy, uh, it is not left, uh, it's it certainly already left its mark. And many businesses at this point in time have, have uh, already publicly announced that they will be closing locations and or filing for bankruptcy. And I happened to do some research over the weekend and I ran into a list of about 20 plus companies that have already publicly announced that they are going to be filing bankruptcy or closing locations. And in fairness, many of these uh, companies have had uh, struggles for the last couple of years. And this is the straw, the coronavirus straw that has literally broken their back. So uh, companies such as Bed Bath & Beyond, Sears, Pizza Hut, uh, Chico's, Calvin Klein, Victoria's Secret, Dress Barn, Kmart, JCPenney, Rite Aid, Amber Crombie & Fitch, uh, CVS, J. Crew, Family Dollar, Macy's, Lord & Taylor, The Gap, Hometown Buffet, Pier 1 Imports, Signet Jewelers, Barney's of New York, Marie Calendars, and more. There are a whole bunch of companies that have, have, have been uh, experiencing issues and challenges over the last several months and even years leading up to this point, but coronavirus has been, been the straw that broke their back, filing bankruptcy, closing locations, Etc. The thing that I don't want to have happen is for you and your business to experience the same thing. I want this to be a year, 2020, where your business thrives, not just ekes by or just barely survives. But the question is, how in the world do you do that in this kind of a, a situation? We, we know that the lifeblood of companies in business is revenue. We know that brand new customers coming in, new sales, uh, are the lifeblood of, of revenue. And uh, so how, uh, how do we do that when every turn our salespeople, our customer service representatives, even sometimes our marketing people are telling us that people are too nervous to buy, budgets are tight, uh, revenue is, 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 is tightened down, and people are just too nervous and too anxious to spend right now. How do we do that? Well, there's, there's a lot of answers to that question, but I just want to zero in and focus on, on one particular issue that I know is affecting a lot of companies right now, and that is this. <clears throat> in times of chaos, in times of emergency, uh, in times of, 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 of desperation, our human brains have a tendency to become very, very myopic, and they start closing down. It's really a, it's really a kind of a protection mechanism. Mentally and emotionally, we start shutting down. And just uh, uh, we, we start shutting down to, to a lot of things uh, that, are, that are outside of us. And I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, about a month, what has it been? Yeah, about a month or so ago, not too terribly long ago, my mother actually passed away. As a matter of fact, she had this massive heart attack and a very unexpected and she passed away and it was a very difficult time. But the morning that my dad texted me, and said, hey, I'm taking, the paramedics are here, they're working on your mom, prayers would be appreciated. Um, you know, I, I met him over at the hospital, we hung out there, and when he finally came out of the back uh, in, with tears in his eyes crying and said she's gone, um, you know, as you can imagine, in that moment when you receive that sort of a news, that someone that you care about has just passed away, uh, all of a sudden time stops, doesn't it? I'm sure you've had that experience when, when, when someone's got that you care about has gotten into an accident or you've received just terrible drastic news. Time just stands still, it stops. And every other concern on the planet becomes irrelevant. The only thing that becomes important to you in that moment is that thing, that news that you just got. 
And as news broke out about the passing of my mom, uh, we sent texts out to friends and family and close friends and close family. And of course, the word spreads. And, and good friends, good friends of mine call and they text and they say, Terry, so sorry to hear. And, and as I see the calls come in and as I see the text messages come in, in those moments, I didn't even respond. Even though some very close very loved friends are calling me, wanting to support me and wish me well and send their condolences, I send them to voicemail. Why? Because I don't have mental and emotional room right now to deal with one more thing. I love them, appreciate them, but, but right now my brain and my mind are just in lockdown mode. And all I can think about is one thing at a time, and that is my dad, my mom, funeral arrangements, all, all of this stuff. Haven't you had that same kind of experience where you've noticed that every other concern gets pushed out and everything's in lockdown mode and you're just focusing on one single thing? I, I share this experience to illustrate the point that that is where business owners are right now. Your customers, my customers, they're in that mental and emotional lockdown mode with coronavirus hitting so hard, news has broken. This is, we're eight weeks into an 18 month long economic recession, the likes of which we haven't experienced since the Great Depression. It's a new day, it's a new time, and there's a whole bunch of new rules. How do we do that? Businesses all around the country are kind of in that panic freak out mode where every other concern is being pushed out and ignored and only one topic at hand rests, and that is how do I survive? How do we make it through? How do we get along? Now, here comes, so with that as a stage, with that as kind of context, right? Here comes you and your salespeople knocking on the door or calling or emailing or, or, or whatnot, trying to sell them something. In this state where, where your customers and clients are kind of in mental and emotional lockdown mode, and here comes a salesperson, the only response that they can logically give is, I don't have time. You, whatever you do, whatever you sell, I'm sure it's great, but I cannot mentally and emotionally deal with you right now. Nothing personal, like it wasn't personal for my best friends to be calling me, wanting to console, right? It, it's nothing personal. I just don't have mental and emotional space right now. So your salespeople don't even really get an opportunity to even try or sell. And even if they do get their foot in the door, do have some initial conversations, they fall flat because they're presenting themselves as a salesperson right now. And right now in this sort of economic environment, salespeople are struggling because they're behaving and acting like a salesperson. We've all had negative experiences with salespeople in the past. We don't want those. And so right now, salespeople are being pushed out, shut out, cut out of conversations simply because we don't have the mental or emotional capacity to deal with a salesperson right now about something that I probably don't need or want. Or I don't even have the time to even hear what you have to say. So that's the wall, that's the problem. Anytime your sales professionals, your customer service reps, your marketers, your account managers, your, your, your customer facing people are, are trying to generate new business, but presenting themselves in a salesperson capacity, they're getting shut down. So what do you do? With that big long preface, with that big long foundation, kind of setting the stage here, what do you do? The problem is it's the persona of the salesperson. Right now, your salespeople have to reach up, take off their salesperson hat or their customer service representative hat or their account manager hat or their marketer hat. They want to take all those hats that they're used to wearing and they need to put them in the garbage can for now. They're welcome to get those back out after the economy rebounds and comes back and when life gets back to normal. But for right now, for the next 18 months, 12 to 18 months, until a vaccine is found and everybody's minds can relax that they're safe and it's okay to go out and spend money. It's okay to spend money, period, but it's okay to go out. Until those things happen, they've got to put all of those hats in the garbage can and instead pick up one hat and one hat only, and that is problem solver. Problem solver. Now, if you Google how to solve problems, you're going to see a pretty broad general framework of how to solve problems. Usually it's about a five step process. Step one, step two, step three, step four, poof, 
your problem is solved. They're right now, more than anything else, your salespeople and your customer service reps, your marketers, your account managers, all your customer facing people, there's only one skill that they need to develop right now, and that is how to solve problems for your customers. So with the time that we have left, I wanna quickly walk you through a simple five-step framework for how to solve your customers' problems. Your prospects, your customers, your ideal clients, they need to view your customer service and salespeople as partners and problem solvers, not salespeople. If they feel for one moment that your salespeople are trying to sell, game over. If they can simply feel that they're there to solve a problem, doors are open. Come in, what can you do? How can you help me? Okay, so step number one in a five step, very simple problem solving framework is this. Step number one is your salespeople and customer service representatives need to simply understand your customer, understand your client. They need to ask questions about things like, what is the negative impact that the coronavirus and this quarantine situation is having on your business right now? Or what's the effect that this whole a uh, shelter at home government mandate is having on your company? Or what have been the consequences of the repercussions uh, uh, the, uh, of, this, uh, of this current coronavirus craziness um, you know, had on your business? Your, your sales reps and your customer service representatives, they need to be asking these kinds of questions where they're sincerely, genuinely asking, how are you holding up? How is this impacting your business? Tell me some stories. And so step number one in a problem solving framework is understand, understand your customer and let them talk to you about how hard and how bad and how hurt and how scared and, and whatnot they are because of the coronavirus and the economic times that we're in. That's it, that's step one. So lots of questions, lots of questions, lots of listening at this point, that's step number one. Step number two is once the ideal client or the prospect or your customer has spent a few minutes talking about how their employees have been laid off or how revenue is down or how they've cut costs and expenses or how they've made some shifts in, in how they operate their business or, or whatever and, and you've heard them talk, second step is you, you as a problem solver need to define what the real underlying issue or challenge is. Now what's interesting about the coronavirus and the times that we are in right now is it is exposing problems and issues and weaknesses and vulnerabilities and gaps and liabilities that all always existed in the company but they've just kind of been hidden. They've been kind of latently hanging out there and just hiding. But because the coronavirus has come, it's done a really good job at exposing those weaknesses to the whole world. And because of those weaknesses, those liabilities, those gaps, those flaws, uh, the business is suffering now at this point. So do a good job in step two at simply defining what the flaw is. What is the gap? What's the liability? Where's the weakness? What is that? Define that. And what you're going to notice is in that, de de in that process of defining what that problem is, you're going to immediately in your brain start seeing some opportunity of how your products and services can help solve that, uh, that close that gap, shore up that weakness, tie up that vulnerability or that flaw, fix that flaw and, and fix, that, uh, fix that, um, um, uh, that liability there, okay? So step two is just simply define the problem. Now step three in a very traditional problem solving network is it's, it's time uh, framework, it's time to start brainstorming. It's time to start examining different alternatives, different options, different choices, different solutions that might be out there. It's not about the pitch at this point, it's about out of all the options that exist out there, which ones could we consider? Which, what, what, what should we be thinking about? <clears throat> and so if you're in the technology space and you, your company sells technology, this is where you're examining all the different technological options out there. If you sell marketing, then it's, this is the point where you examine all the different marketing options that are out there. If you are in training or consulting, you same kind of thing. Whatever it is that you sell, right, doesn't matter. Your job now is to, with them, explore all the different options that are out there. Um, and of course, one of those is going to be what you are ultimately going to be selling to them. So once they have kind of brainstormed, you've brainstormed together, 
all the different options out there, now it's time for you in step four to get down to kind of the brass tacks and figure out one specific alternative, one specific uh, solution, one specific product or service that you wanna focus on and come up with a plan. Come up with a good price that works for them. Come up with a good, uh, you know, define how that partnership is gonna work between you and them and just, just put together a good plan, good price, good partnership, good product, good service, customized and tailored just for them. And they're nodding their head and they're, they're feeling very good about this solution. And then of course, step five in a, in a five-step problem solving uh, process is then you simply implement that. It's time to apply what, what, uh, what you've just learned or you, you head to the install or you deliver what they bought or you uh, incorporate and use what, they, uh, what, 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 they've, uh, what they've just pur uh, purchased or you go ahead and start the production process and the fulfillment process, but you implement, you execute the, the plan or the product that they have just, uh, they have just bought. Those are the really the, <clears throat> the very simple five steps to solving a problem. Step number one, slow way down and just understand how has the coronavirus, COVID-19, negatively impacted their company? Uh, what's, what's the effect and the consequences been? Let them tell some stories. Step two, Define what the actual weakness, liability, gap, or flaw is. Be very clear on that. Step number three is now it's time to brainstorm all the different options that are available to close that gap or fix that weakness or strengthen that, that particular flaw. And uh, go wide here, really come up with lots of different ideas. Step number four is refine things down to the one solution that's really gonna work and work like a champion for them. And this ideally is your product, your solution that you can offer that's 10 times better than anybody else. And then step number five is after they've signed the agreement, the contract, and they're ready to move forward, get going. Uh, you know, deliver, deliver a great job for them and put, uh, put that product to work for them to help them solve some of the, the challenges that they've had. So the, the, the moral of the story here is you and I have got to do a good job at not selling right now. We can't sell, we can't be salespeople. We have to be problem solvers. Go through those simple five step process when you're working with a customer to simply solve a problem. And if you follow those five steps, you will do more uh, than anything else to close larger sales in an economic recession than anything else. Uh, you'll do that more frequently, more consistently, and you will thrive in this sort of crazy COVID-19 economic recession that we are in. So if you've uh, enjoyed this, if this has helped you, then let me invite you to take one action for me, uh, two actions for me. First off, give this, give this video a like. Everybody likes a good thumb up. I like a good thumb up. So click that button and just like this video. Second action is go ahead and subscribe. Subscribe to this video so that you, or excuse me, this channel so that you can get notified every single week when I, when I come out with new, um, new videos just like this. Okay, there's a third. Third is, if you found some value to this, then let me invite you to click the link below and join um, Hanson University. Hanson University is a coaching program. It's a professional development, training, and coaching program where every single week you get access to me in a, in a, in a group setting where I coach and mentor you through the process of outbound sales prospecting, inbound marketing, uh, consultative selling, account management, customer service, and professional development. All of those areas that you need to really take your business and your sales revenue to the next level. <clears throat> Best part is you can join Hanson University right now for just one dollar. Usually uh, companies pay multiple thousands of dollars to get access to our weekly workshops, but right now during the COVID-19 recession that we are in, we put together just a very special kind of 30-day uh, opportunity for you to try our coaching programs for just a buck, just one dollar for the first 30 days. So give the, give the link below a click and uh, come test drive us, take us, uh, take us for a spin if you will and see what kind of value we can create for you and if you like it you can continue to partner with us over the long term. But click the link below, click subscribe, click like, sure appreciate you guys. Enjoy the rest of your day, keep up the good work and until we meet again, can't wait to see you right back here on the next episode of The Terry Hansen Show. We'll see you soon, bye bye.